Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's Market Wrap. So I am back in Philly. Well, actually, I stayed in Philly this weekend. I had an awesome time doing an event with a great collector's group. There's nothing more fun than meeting new guys who are collectors and love to talk watches. So this weekend, I'm finally getting to go on a plane. While you're watching this Market Wrap, I'll be relaxing on a beach in Florida for a few days. So it's been a long time coming. I can't wait. And finally this week, we get to debut our new Market Wrap studio. So let's get to it. So three watches I love this week that came across my desk. The first one is a Rolex GMT. Now, not your typical GMT for me, but the Coke version. This is a 16710. It's a 1988 Coke. I love this piece. I remember selling them new. We don't see them as much because the Pepsis, for whatever reason, got to be much more popular, but love the original Coke. It's in great shape. Love to have it. The second piece is a beautiful piece, a Langa. It's an 1815 chrono, but a fairly rare one. It's the 414028. It's white gold, black dial, love the Arabic numerals. Just a gorgeous piece. It really wears well for Langa chrono. It's a little thinner, but absolutely beautiful piece. And the last one is another favorite of mine. It's a Vacheron. It's a stainless steel triple calendar. They came out with it a couple of years ago. It's the 3110V. This particular one has the blue accents. They also did it with the red accents. This is my favorite version of it. I think it's a great value. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous Vacheron. Well, Watches and Wonders is officially behind us, and I feel like I've talked Paddock and Rolex to death, but I was finally able to spend some time looking at some of the other brands that I had missed at the beginning. So first of all, Bulgari did a new perpetual calendar, Octafinissimo. It's super lightweight in titanium, the slimmest perpetual calendar in the market, just 5.8 millimeters thick. The movement is just 2.75 millimeters thick. Uses a micro rotor, has 408 parts. Very cool piece, just awesome to see Bulgari, as well as Piaget pushing the thinness. Now, when I started in this business 100 years ago, thinness was the thing. We had the Concord Delirium, and brands would compete to make the thinnest and smallest complications. Now we had a generation of crazy big watches, so it's really nice to see the pendulum swinging back a little bit. They also did a limited edition Octafinissimo designed by Japanese architect Tadao Endo, and it's an awesome 100-piece limited edition with a crescent moon already sold out. Vacheron did a traditional split-second ultra-thin chrono in platinum, 42.5 millimeters, with a height of only 10.72 millimeters. It's a 15-piece limited edition, and it's just awesome. I love to see them showing off in high watchmaking and doing these extremely limited pieces. They also did two great additions to the overseas line, a stainless steel tourbillon with a blue dial and a white gold perpetual calendar, both with a blue dial and a fantastic skeleton version. And just for those of us who like to might need a great knockaround beach watch, Oris came out with a new professional diver's watch. It's 49.5 millimeters, so absolutely huge. But for all you saturation divers out there, or like me, those guys who float in your backyard pool, just a perfect summer watch. They also came out with a new Divers 65 38 millimeter bronze with cotton candy dials. Absolutely great fun. There's a sky blue, a wild green, lipstick pink. Hard not to smile looking at those pieces. Oris is a small Swiss brand, but they do no quartz watches. I believe they represent a great value for the weekend piece or just a great watch for gifting. Now we are adding a new section today, responding to some questions that come in from Instagram. And hopefully, if you like it, we'll make it a regular occurrence. So the first question comes in from Garwich Meantime. Has the new Batman on an Oyster bracelet affected the value of the old Batman? Well, today I'm happy to be wearing my old Batman. So far, the answer is no. But I do expect that the new Batman, when it comes out, probably June or July, will cause the earlier versions to drop. The new one's a better version. It's got the upgraded movement. I also expect we'll see the Batgirl definitely soften up when the new GMTs come out. The next question comes from Mylogram. 39 millimeter Explorer 1s, are they about to explode in price? Question. Are they relatively safe for a bit? So we did see a pop on the Explorer 39s quite quickly as the introduction came out. We sold everything out of inventory, but I'm already seeing them come back to reality a little bit. There were some people who were posting them at $14,000, $15,000. I don't think they will be that kind of crazy strong. We expect they'll kind of come back to that nine to 11, depending on the version, depending on the dial. And I think they'll stay there for a while. I expect, again, as they introduce some of the new ones, we might see more hit the market. 
They've already jumped from six to 7,000. So I think they're probably gonna stay in that range for a while. I think there's a lot on the market, so I don't think it's ever gonna get to be that crazy piece. The next question is Ian Fort Lauderdale. What do you think of the jump in price of the 15202 ST? Now this is a great question. I'm not surprised that this watch has made a move. Next year is the 50th anniversary. And we all know AP knows how to get attention. It will be a huge launch next year. The 5402 shot up over the last two years. And now knowing the 15202 is going away, I think we're gonna see the same kind of appreciation. I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do with the new version of the 15202. I think what they'll really do is put just an incredible movement in it, really show off a little bit, a la Paddock this year. The last question we're taking is from Oma Q. Prices are increasing rapidly, like we've never seen before. When will this stop and why? Now this is a great question because you're absolutely right. The only argument I would make is that I have seen this once before. It was really back in 2006 or 2007. Back then you could basically sell anything you bought. It was just about whatever you could source, could sell. Prices were going up monthly. It was really easy times. Now today we're seeing very much the same thing. We're seeing crazy price escalations across almost every asset class. Money's flowing into collectibles, hard assets, crypto. It's really crazy boom times. And it will end, and it usually ends just a little messy. I would expect we'll either see some kind of a global market crisis or a liquidity crisis will occur, and then everything will kind of come back to reality a little bit. I think the thing to keep in mind is the market is much broader than it was back in 06 and 07. I think it's also, we've seen this market go up almost across the board. You know, it started with Jorns, it moved over to some of the other brands, but now almost everything has escalated. I think right now it's a great time to trade, possibly realize some upside on some of those unwanted pieces, and maybe chase a part of the market that has not spiked, or truly chase that grail piece. The good news is we've never seen the type of liquidity we have in the market today in watches, so it's easy to transact, really fun to see where the market goes next. So that was this week's Market Wrap. Hope to see you next week.